Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas for KitGrew and today we are taking a look at the Antec Cooler H2O K240. So let's start with the basics. The Antec Cooler H2O K240 is a 240mm AIO liquid cooler that from the outset looks relatively no frills. At the same time it's relatively inexpensive at £59.99 and has a nice clean aesthetic. Although pretty standard in appearance, the Cooler H2O K240 differs quite significantly from most other AIO liquid coolers available as the pump is built into the radiator rather than the CPU block. This offers a couple of benefits. Firstly, cleaner cable management as there's no need to run a pump power cable across your motherboard. And secondly, a much smaller CPU block. The K240's block is only 50mm thick, so nice and low profile. Antec do also state that having the pump mounted in the radiator rather than on the CPU block helps prevent any damage to your CPU uh, from vibrations, but I honestly can't say that I've ever encountered this being an issue. I would have thought that the potential for damage uh, of a CPU through vibration would have already been addressed considering the number of both air and liquid coolers which would vibrate against the CPU, if it's actually ever been a problem, that is. In the box, we find the cooler itself, two 120mm blue LED fans, an installation guide, and all the necessary mounting for all current Intel and AMD mounts, alongside quite a few older sockets as well. A braided 4-pin PWM splitter is also included for connecting both fans to your motherboard CPU fan header, and credits to Antec on how well everything's been organised. All of the mounting parts are bagged and labelled clearly, uh, which is great and helps hugely when trying to locate the parts you need for installation, even down to the fans which are packaged with their own screws. All bases are covered here for mounting the cooler to your case. You get standard case fan screws, long and short radiator mounting screws, and a number of washers as well. The cooler itself feels nice and solid, really well built actually. The tubing is braided with a Teflon coating, which is nice to see. It looks good and feels tough, and at 35 centimeters there is plenty of tubing to reach around your case. The radiator itself with integrated pump is slightly longer than your typical 240 millimeter rad, but only by a centimeter or so, or 13 millimeters when compared to the Corsair Hydro series H100i. If you're looking to mount the K240 in a super small form factor case, it would definitely be worth double checking to ensure it will fit. Uh, but I can only be, see this being a problem for a very small number of users. I'm personally a big fan of the boxy rectangular aesthetic of the radiator, very reminiscent of EKWB rads. The pump's power connection cable is also braided and 47 centimeters long. It's also cool to see that this is SATA connection, uh, so this can be run straight to your PSU. The included fans also feel solid, made from heavyweight plastics. The fan cables are also braided and there are rubber isolation pads around each of the mounting points. They are LED, but one small criticism I have is that they are blue. Personally, I think it would have been better if they had been white, as this would suit the more neutral appearance of the cooler. And as this is the only colour available, it may be a little off-putting for those builders with a specific colour in mind. What's really nice to see with the K240 is the attention to detail. The solid build and little things like the across-the-board cable braiding actually deliver a really premium feel. You don't get a bunch of RGB illumination, but the quality certainly surpasses the £60 price point. Installation is pretty straightforward thanks to the meticulous labelling of all the hardware. You first need to set up the backplate by passing the included mounting screws through the socket specific holes. With the backplate fitted you then screw on the four standoff nuts. Uh, one issue I encountered at this stage is that the nuts are a little tight to thread and screw on. Um, and as there are no clips or retention brackets uh, for the long screws that pass through your motherboard, they have a tendency to move away from the backplate uh, leaving me spinning the nut and screw together. On one occasion I didn't notice this for a few minutes, so it would be a really good idea to attach the backplate first before installing your motherboard, uh, or at least make sure you have access to the backplate uh, once the motherboard has been installed in your case. With the backplate secured, you just need to place the top mounting bracket over the CPU block and line it up with the protruding backplate screws. Thermal compound is pre-applied, uh, but this was removed and reapplied to ensure consistency in our testing. With the CPU block in place, the four top mounting nuts can then be screwed on to firmly hold the block in place. Adding the fans is a pretty standard affair and will depend to a degree on where you would like to mount the radiator. Connecting up cables is also nice and quick as it involves just plugging the fans into the included splitter and then to your motherboard um, and connecting the single SATA power cable for the pump. 
nice and easy. The process is relatively toolless, which is great to see, um, and only took around seven minutes or so. Installation for AMD is quite a bit simpler, as the backplate isn't required. All you need to do is swap out the top mounting bracket for the included AMD one, and clip each side to the mount built onto the motherboard. With installation complete, it's on to testing. At KitGuru we have recently updated our testing setup, and now test temperatures on the more recent Z170 platform. For CPU, we are testing with the Intel Core i7-7700K installed in an Asus Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. For RAM, we have a single 8GB stick of Guile Evo X RGB for some added bling, running at 3200MHz, and for storage, uh, this is handled by a 120GB SanDisk SSD+. Powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. When testing, we take a number of readings with both the i7-7700K's turbo locked, and overclocked to 4.5 GHz. The temperatures taken are delta T values, which means we subtract the ambient temperature from the red CPU temperature. More details on our full testing methodology can be found on kitguru.net. So onto the results. With the 7700K at 4 GHz, the K240 sits in between the Gamer Storm Castle and Captain, and with the exception of being around about one degree hotter at idle, pretty much came out on par. Similar results were achieved at 4.5 GHz, but the K240 did move ahead of the Castle 240, but only very slightly. Overall though, it's by no means the best cooler we have tested, uh, but this does show very similar performance to other 240mm AIO liquid coolers with dual fan configurations. Not groundbreaking, but still solid results. Noise levels also sit middle of the road on paper, but the K240 is actually the second quietest 240mm AIO liquid cooler tested so far on our new testing setup. Many people don't appreciate the importance of a good power supply. A bad power supply can take out your motherboard, might even take out your processor. Seasonic has won more awards from KitGuru over the past 10 years than any other company. KitGuru recommends Seasonic. Now, although audible noise is good, performance isn't crazy impressive. Uh, but actually, when you consider that at £60, the cooler H20 K240 is also the cheapest 240mm AIO liquid cooler tested, in some instances by around £40 to £50, it actually looks pretty competitive. When I say competitive, if you consider the Cooler Master MA410M tested previously shows higher temperatures um, in instances by an extra 10 degrees and is available for around about the same price, the K240 actually looks like a pretty good deal. You are sacrificing quite a bit in terms of aesthetics and customizable lighting, uh, but actually gaining better temperatures and very similar noise levels. Overall, although not feature laden, I actually really like the cooler H20 K240. Performance isn't likely to win any awards, but you can expect similar results to most 240mm liquid coolers with variances of a handful of degrees. Noise levels are also good, and even in testing I could only really hear the cooler when at full load. What really impressed me was that when the fancy LED lighting is stripped away, Antec have managed to produce a really high quality cooler at a competitive price. I love that all the cables are braided, which makes everything look really neat, and the attention to detail with accessories and packaging, everything being separately bagged and labelled, really simplified installation. The pump being installed in the radiator rather than the CPU block also helps with more streamlined aesthetic, and I like that the connection is SATA, as this avoids any confusion with where it should be connected up. It's a simple no-nonsense cooler that feels reassuringly tough. There doesn't appear to be any area where Antec have had to make sacrifices, uh, whilst keeping the price competitive, and at £60, it's only around 10 to £15 dearer than most 120mm liquid coolers I've seen in the past. To me, the Antec Cooler H20K240 is a great choice for a new builder on a budget, considering an unlocked CPU who might want to dabble with some overclocking, and doesn't really care about highly programmable lighting, uh, but would still like a clean aesthetic to their build. I'm sure that when unboxing all their new components, and with the K240 physically in hand, they'll be just as impressed that the K240 only cost them £59.99. Make sure you like this video if you liked it, and don't forget to hit subscribe for future videos. If you don't want to miss the next video, feel free to click the bell icon below for notifications of new video releases from KitGuru. I